I am Elle Penelope, author of Epic Fantasy and Paranormal Romance, and welcome to My Imaginary Friends, a look behind the scenes of an author mapping the worlds in my head and making them a reality. Hello friends, today is Sunday, July 10th, 2022, and this is episode 177 of My Imaginary Friends. I'm Leslie. So this week's best thing is, it's not as bad as I thought, and I'm referring to the fast first draft of my current work in progress, which is the Black Towns book. So I I didn't read the whole thing, but I skimmed it in order to prepare myself for the revision, which I'll talk about in a minute. And I've really been feeling that even the end, that I the part that I dictated and finished even faster than fast, than the normal fast drafting process. I was like, that was a huge mess. The whole book felt like a mess when I was writing it. I was very unhappy. But in my review, it's not as bad as I thought. And you know what? It never is. There's never been a time when my first draft was as bad as it felt like it was when I was writing it. And it's like, I know this. I know it. I've written enough books that I know it but it's always wonderful when I actually prove it to myself again. Which is not to say that it does not require a huge amount of work, but it's not like another from the ground up rewrite. I mean, it's a rewrite, but it's a rewrite within the parameters that I've set. The basics of the story that I have are solid, are good. I was moved by the end, even though, you know, I didn't think I would be because I didn't think it was enough there. So... It's a, it's, a, it's a weight off my shoulders. It's a big relief. Um, you know, first drafts are my least favorite thing in the entire world. And now I get to get into the part that I actually like, which is massaging the words and the themes and making everything pretty and nice and polished. And it's still daunting because I still have a lot of work to do. But I do think I'm now confident, like, on the outside, as opposed to knowing on the inside that I, I could do it. I feel like now on the outside, I know I can do it that this will be a book that I'm proud of. So actual writing update. I've been working on two books, The Black Towns book and Beastly Kingdom, which is the sequel to Savage City. Now I was supposed to be doing the fast draft of Beastly Kingdom and I paused. I had written, I started again, I had written some scenes and I just started feeling like I was just writing scenes because uh, I did not have a complete outline to work from. And so I was just going, you know, one foot in front of the other Not exactly pantsing, because I kind of know what's going to happen, but I didn't know enough. So I took a step back, I paused, and I was like, before I write any more new scenes, I need to plot it out. So I brought back Plotter, the program. Plotter, that's P-L-O-T-T-R. I have recommended it before with caveats, because it's still in active development, and I found it to be fairly buggy. It was so buggy that um, even though I back up everything, I did lose a file, like it was corrupted. And I had the backup, so it was fine. It automatically backs up. But I just kind of was like, eh. So a little while ago, I stopped using Plotter. I had I'd been trying to use this software for my story Bibles. So if you're not familiar, Plotter is software that is used for plotting, but it also, you can store all your character profile information there. They have characters, places, notes, and then your kind of scene Um, outlines or timelines, like note card views and outline views. So in some ways it has similar to functionality to the Scrivener uh, note card view, but in some ways I liked it more for that aspect of it. I tend not to use Scrivener note cards at all. It's just like a personal aesthetic aesthetic thing. Anyway, I'm not going to use Plotter for my story Bibles because I still don't quite trust it after I corrupted that file, but I do trust it for actually plotting out scenes, using the note cards, using the templates. It's got templates from all the different plotting systems or the major plotting systems in there. So uh, Story Grid, Save the Cat, John Truby, list goes on and on. They've got the romance ones, Romancing the Beat. So for Beastly Kingdom, I actually am using the Romancing the Beat uh, story beats to plot this out because it's supposed to be a paranormal romance. And I never do that. And my romances are often not romancy enough in my mind uh and maybe in readers minds too i don't know so i'm trying for this book which is a um marriage of convenience enemies to lovers story that is in this world it's very you know it's it's fantasy slash paranormal romance but i wanted to follow the romance beats for once and so in plotter i i went in i put in the scenes that i'd already drafted 
and I started plotting out the rest of the book. It was really, really helpful. I'm doing each scene with the story grid steps. So you have the story template with the beats, and then each scene can have a template or multiple templates as well. And so I'm just, I want to do the work, front load the work, so that when I'm fast drafting, hopefully, the idea is that it will be less to do in revision. And the way I was doing it before just felt like I was just writing and I didn't know where I was going. And I, I mean, I, I knew, like, I'm starting in New York and I'm going to DC and I'm going to take 95, right? <laughs> like, I knew that, but I needed to know the exact exits that I'm going to stop at for the get to get gas and the rest stops. And like, I need more details, basically. So I stopped and I did that. I took a few days this week to do that. And I don't think I've quite finished the process. I'm in the middle of it, but it's feeling good. And so once I finish that, I will go back to my fast draft. I'll go back to dictating, which was working pretty well. And we will get that draft done. Back to the other manuscript that I'm working on, which has the fast draft completed. Now I'm in the planning the revision stage, but I took a similar tact with a different piece of software to give myself like a high level overview of what I'd written and how I'm planning on fixing it. So after a fast draft, I, I usually go through, examine the scenes, figure out structurally what's going on, where the problems are, and then start thinking about the details that I have to add because this book is going to become twice as long. You know, my first drafts are very short. There's not a lot of detail in there. I need to know what happens and then the emotional beats of the characters in addition to the external plot beats. And then, you know, the revision is basically rewriting everything, but with all the emotion needed and the settings and locations and I'm changing people's names probably, or I'm giving them names because in the first draft, they're just called man and woman and, you know, things like that. Uh, so I'm using a different software for that because I'm not doing physical index cards. This is a stage where I might before in a previous book have, you know, used physical index cards, but I've been looking for a way to do that on the computer. And there's various different programs. I was using um, one called Whimsical for both of these books, actually, for previous drafts. I like Whimsical a lot. It's an online service. I mean, software as a service. There's not an app that you download. It's, just, it's a website. And it does Kanban boards and sticky notes and um, flow charts, mind maps, those kind of things. Very pretty, very easy to use. Uh, the free version is very powerful. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it before. The only downside to Whimsical is that you can't export your notes. So I had all these sticky notes and it was fine. I could look at them. I could just, you know, I could take a picture of them and I could make a PDF or a PNG file, but I couldn't export the text. And so I was like, there's got to be something like this that will let me export into a spreadsheet or a text file or something. And so I started using Miro, which I've heard about a lot. I've never used it before. Very similar piece of software, higher end, more features, but I think the free version will do me well. I can make these sort of online sticky notes as a flowchart also and export to a CSV file, which works really well for me. So I can do this visual layout and then have an outline in a spreadsheet to work uh, to work from to do more details. And that's what I've been doing. And so I will link to a screenshot in the show notes for those on audio. Um, I blurted out, so <laughs> no spoilers, but... Basically, I went through, skimmed the scenes to find out what happens. Is there conflict in each scene? What is the emotional progression? And these are not all the scenes. These are just main characters, main external plot. There's some other POVs that I have not included in here, but I really need to know that the spine of my story was strong. The external plot was working and strong and motivated. The character has agency and it's satisfying all of those things. And I felt good about that. That's the thing is like, it's not as bad as I thought it was. This actually is working. Like there's a lot that I have to still do, a lot of world building, but the flow works 99.9% .9 of it. And that was a really great realization to have. And this way of doing it, um, I like it a lot. And so what I had been using Whimsical for and what I could probably also do in Miro was taking each sticky note and for like potential scenes, the way I would do with an index card. So the way I used index cards is like, oh, well, this could happen. You know, I have index cards like 
the sisters have a scene where they braid each other's hair and they bond or, you know, you know, so-and-so goes to meet this person and X, Y, Z happens. And these are scenes that are not in the book, but I could be. And, uh, I'm just, the index cards are fine, but like the space issue and the clutter issue is a thing. So having it all digital, I just like it at this moment. It's like, this is where I am right now. Next book, I might be back to index cards. If you listened long enough, you will know that I change things up all the time. And I like software. And I like tr playing with different software. And, and right now, Miro, I'm liking a lot. However, if as you can see in the screenshot, I still don't know where the act breaks are in this. I feel like the story is solid. I'm not clear on the structure when it comes to any of the structural systems that I'm used to using. I'm not... I'm not dialed in on that and I haven't been this whole time and it is a little concerning. So I was doing some research on, you know, what do you do when save the cat doesn't work? I think I like Googled that, like when save the cat doesn't work. And I found a bunch of articles very critical of save the cat and other story structuring systems, which I get. Uh, there's people who believe it's just a formula and it's bad and you shouldn't do it and they don't like hero's journey and that's all fine. Save the cat is very, in its original form, Blake Snyder's book, Save the Cat, which is for screenwriters, is very stringent. He's like, on page 12, this should happen. On page 25, this should happen. On page 50. And nobody can write like that. I mean, and this is assuming, like in script world, one page per minute, one minute of film time. Well, some movies are 90 minutes and some movies are 300 minutes. And so what happens on page 25 of a 90 minute movie and on page 25 of a 300 minute movie obviously different things. I've never paid any attention to that. There are uh, these really good uh, spreadsheets that I've used for, for uh, structuring. Jamie Gold has these spreadsheets where you can put in the number of words that you're expecting the book to have, and it will give you at 25%, at 27%, at 33%. Very similar things. Never paid attention to that. I, my mind doesn't work that way. So I've never found that as a, a detriment of these plotting systems because I've never paid attention to those things. But if you're trying to follow those rules, I can see that's a problem. So while there are those kinds of criticisms, and there's all kinds of other criticisms of these systems, they've worked for me in the past, always. So now I'm at a point where this book is structured, it's feeling different, and I was looking for just some reassurance or some ideas or answers. And I came across this book about how the movie Rocky debunks Save the Cat. And I will link to this in the show notes. And this post is based on a video, uh, Rocky, Why You Don't Need Writing Formulas, that I watched. And then I had to watch the movie Rocky. And when I found that video, I immediately next in the search was this video on writing Rocky and why you need a formula. So there's two diametrically opposed viewpoints about the structure of the film Rocky. And so I was like, okay, I told my husband, we're watching Rocky tonight. I don't think I'd ever seen Rocky before. I've seen like Rocky IV. I've seen pieces of various Rockies, but this movie did not ring any bells. And so I don't think I've ever seen it from beginning to end before. So we've got one, uh, one person who believes that Rocky proves that Save the Cat is invalid or doesn't need to be followed. And the other that says Rocky is a perfectly formulated, not necessarily Save the Cat, but perfectly structured uh, movie saying two completely different things. One person believes that the inciting incident of Rocky happens on page 55 or like halfway through the movie, which is very late for an inciting incident. Most systems are like inciting incident by 25% has to happen. The opposing video was like, that's not the inciting incident, dum-dum. <laughs> and I found watching both of them and watching the movie to be very elucidating and really helped me. I know that a lot of these plotting systems are applied to movies and books after the fact. And they're sort of using, they're sort of saying like, okay, we can prove the point that this is intuitive. Writers have been doing this subconsciously or unconsciously for a long time. And we're going to lay this plotting system over this book or movie from the past and show you why it works. And there's controversy about that as a, as a way to do things. But watching the movie watching these videos, seeing people come at it from very different perspectives, just helped me chill out a little bit more about it. Because I mean, it's always the case, whenever I've seen breakdowns of all kinds of movies from different plotting systems that will put different 
of those beats, of those turning points at different places. So it really is a matter of perspective. And I think even Sean Coyne, who is the author of Story Grid, which is based on Robert McKee's story book, which is very seminal, has said this, you know, it's like, it doesn't really matter exactly where you put the points, is it that you have the points, that you can identify the points? Which, if you are extraordinarily high compliance, I can see being difficult. I am a high compliance person that things have to fit, and that doesn't actually bother me. So if you're interested in this type of thing and structure, I, I would recommend watching these two. It's basically the second video is a direct um, rebuttal of the first. So he saw that video and he was like, mm, the inciting incident in Rocky is not in the middle. It is not when he gets the fight. It is much quieter. And he makes a very good case for the fact for debunking this first video. And I find them both very interesting. Side note, Rocky, which was made in 1976, also sparked a very interesting conversation between me and my husband about the relationship between Rocky and Adrian. Uh, looking at it from 2022 eyes, <laughs> uh, and, and patriarchy and consent, and uh, off topic for here, but very interesting. Like, it's a great movie. I really enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed it because there's not too much boxing in it. You know, there's not. it's not a boxing movie in the way that the, the future ones or the later ones are. It is more a drama. It's sort of a character. They do a lot of character development in it. And I did appreciate that. And I think that it, I'm sure there's pl plenty of think pieces about feminism and toxic masculinity and patriarchy in Rocky. And uh, yeah, just be aware if you haven't seen it in a while or if you've never seen it. This, you're going to be like, wait, what's happening? Wait, what? Uh, hold on. <laughs> but I'm not going to go into that right now because that's off topic. For me, because I'm in the position where in this Black Towns book, I'm not exactly sure what the act breaks are. I tried to, I've identified turning points and I'm like, is this the break into act two or is this, is there a midpoint? There's a point in Rocky, early in the movie, where he looks into the mirror, and he's looking at a picture of his eight-year-old self, and then he looks at himself now. And there's no dialogue, but you can tell he's looking at, you know, this kid had so many hopes and dreams, and this man has, you know, has not realized any of them. That's like a classic mirror moment, and it's early in the movie. It's not at the midpoint where the mirror moment, according to James Scott Bell, write your novel from the middle, is supposed to be. And I was watching, I was like, this is the mirror moment, but it's not in the right place. And then at 50% in, there is another moment. He's not literally looking in the mirror, but of self-reflection, of um, considering the odds against him. But that moment could also be <laughs> all is lost. Uh, and all is lost is usually 75, 80% into the book. I mean, into the movie or a book or a story or whatever. So it plays around with structure. It, cases have been made, obviously, about structure in this movie. And it allowed me and my high compliance rule following heart to take a step back and breathe and be like, it's okay if I can't figure out where the act breaks are in my book. I like the story and I think it's working the way I'm writing it. And I feel like it's the way the story has to be. And that is enough. And for me to say that is hard. And it doesn't take away from any of the structure things because I had to learn structure for all of these years in order to, to know enough about it to, to break it. You know, I before I wrote my first novel, I spent over five years in workshops you know, in writing workshops, um, doing critiques of other people's writing and looking at a very micro level, five, 10, 15 pages at a time. In these workshops, you don't learn how to plot a book. You don't learn how to write a book from beginning to end with any kind of structure. And so all of that for me is completely self-taught. And it was a very valuable, very necessary you know, the first thing my editor told me about Song of Blood and Stone, my first book when I sold it to a traditional publisher, was the structure is off. We need to fix the structure. And that's epic fantasy. You know, she was like, it needs more hero's journey. And so that's feedback that I have gotten. 
And I took it to heart. And I do try to address structure very clearly. But there are times when I have to let go. And this book is one of those times. Every book is different. So one of those things where you have to learn the rules before you can break them. And I have to trust that I'm a good enough writer now that I'm that this lack of ability to figure out what the act breaks are is not necessarily something that means the book is broken or the book is is structured improperly like that's the way the book is and someone else will probably be able to easily figure out the act breaks <laughs> i hope or maybe people will disagree about what the inciting incident is and what the turning points are but ultimately if they enjoy the story then it doesn't matter In other news, we've been watching more TV and movies. We actually went to see uh, Thor Dark, no, Thor Love and Thunder yesterday, and I enjoyed it. I, I've already forgotten it, but it was fun. I, I liked Ragnarok. Yeah, Thor Ragnarok, Taika Waititi's first uh, Thor better. I just thought it was better constructed, but this one was trying to do something else, and I think in large part it succeeded. It was a different kind of movie, but it was still a lot of fun, and... Uh, I did enjoy it, though it's not going to stick with me. We've also been doing a lot of Star Trek watching. So we finished Strange New Worlds, which I loved Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Highly recommend that show. I, I just, I'm sad that it's over now and I can't watch anymore for a year or two. After that, we were kind of in this like, Star Trek, we want more. So we were watching Lower Decks. We started watching Picard, which I had never had any desire to watch before. I really enjoyed first season of Picard. We're in the middle of season two, which is a slog. Not enjoying season two, but I'm going to get to the end. Lower Decks is great. It's the animated um, half hour Rick and Morty-ish Star Trek. So that's what we've been doing. And oh my goodness, the trailer for The Woman King came out. That just left me really invigorated after watching that trailer. I will link to it. And I don't know what the buzz is. I haven't, like I said, busy day, busy week. I haven't been online that much. I felt like, oh my gosh, seeing all of these dark-skinned women, powerful women on screen, it was giving me life. I loved it. There's empowerment there, but there's also, I don't want to fight. Like, I don't want to be a warrior. I want, you know, to have the choice, the ability to be badass and be a warrior. And I really appreciate seeing it on screen. And specifically, all of these dark skin actresses getting work and getting good roles and just being amazing and fantastic. But there's something to be said for, and then, you know, it's based on a real story. I mean, it's based on the real Dahomey um, warriors, the female warriors who the Dora Milaje were based on. And I think that story is fabulous. But there is another conversation to be had similar to, not not similar, but in, a, in the same vein as the Rocky-Adrian relationship conversation, like male and female relations, you know, at this time in history, the 16th, 17th, 18th century, when, you know, these African women were, were fighting and, and being warriors. In Europe, the women were being coddled and put on pedestals and literally not allowed to do anything, not allowed to work or, or, or fight, especially. And, and then push that to modern times. There's lots of different conversations and complicated relationships between men and women and history and um, and things to think about. So I still love the trailer. I'm excited to see the movie. I think that having the option to be a badass warrior is very cool. And having the option to not is also very cool. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't know too many women who would actually want to do that. But the fact that they could is great. Anyway, so that is it for me for this week. Uh, goals for the coming week are to... I'm not sure what I'm doing with Black Towns. I, don't, I might be ready to start actually writing the revision. I might need another day or two of just planning before I get ready to write again. We'll see. And for Beastly Kingdom, I'm still going through the process of plotting the rest of it. That will probably take me several more days, maybe the whole week. I'm just trying to take a little bit of the pressure off myself and do what I have to do and worry about the deadlines a little bit later, uh, but still keep working towards the goals, obviously not slacking off, but there's so much other stress happening in my life that uh, I'm just going to relax where I can. So I hope that you have a wonderful week and I will talk to you next week. 
For episode show notes and to sign up for the footnotes newsletter and get the show notes in your inbox, go to myimaginaryfriendsshow.com. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and watch the video episodes on YouTube. You can email me questions at podcast at lpenelope.com. And I would really appreciate a rating or review to help support the show. My Imaginary Friends is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. For more fantastic podcasts, go to frolic.media slash podcasts. <laughs>